Hi, this is yet another video about the auxiliary ML. I am doing, it seems like I'm doing nothing else recently. So I have completely disassembled one finally. I used the missingparts.de kit for, for repair and I have discovered um, another failure mechanism. So um, I'm just going to show no one uh, now how it is, um, what it looks like when it's disassembled and what the problem areas are. This is what I'm working with. I have a bunch of um, auxiliary errors from my own cars, uh, some that I bought when they were cheap and, as, and bought them as not working. That was intentional. And um, currently what's missing is uh, on the far right two of the 126s and I have also the new old stock 119 that's uh, inside where I do my tests. But everything else is here and I hope that I will be able to repair all of these. This is one of the two 126s that I have opened up. I tried to uh, start with uh, something where I have two of. And this particular one is the one that I thought was bad, but apparently it's not, or it's uh, not necessarily bad. So I'm going to see what happens on that one. It didn't go extremely well. As you can see that I have um, completely broken off the rim here. But since this is going to be uh, put together with some type of JB weld material or something like that, it is not a big deal, I hope. So we'll see. So what happens if you take the cover off, you will see this. And here I have already put in new parts from missingparts.de that I have mentioned before. I want to emphasize I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just order their parts and I report what I see and they are perfect. They do make the spring a little softer in order that it doesn't push all that hard against the bimetallic strip here and is takes, uh, makes the warm-up period a bit longer and also the air gap a bit bigger at any given temperature. So what uh, how this works is that the spring here pulls this against the bimetallic strip and when that heats up it moves to the right and closes closes the air gap that is it and it can go all the way against this stop um, so that is how that part works and here the failure mechanism is either that the spring breaks and on this one I had just that top part of the spring left everything else was gone completely gone I don't know how it didn't fall out when I open it up or the other thing is that uh, this hole rips out and then of course it doesn't work either so if you take this off oh let me show you something other something else first I was always wondering what this screw here in the back does, this nut. And it turns out the hole where the screw goes through is oval, it's not round. So you can push it up and push it down. So this would be down towards the mounting bracket and up. Come on. Okay. And if you look on the other side, so this would be the down position and this would be up the up position. So you are actually adjusting the initial air gap by using this, by opening this nut and, and moving the bracket here. So now let's disassemble this. So this is the, the bracket that moves when you uh, loosen the nut in the back and there's also an o-ring that seals come on oh <laughs> doesn't work when the nut is still on of course so okay so here is an o-ring that seals against this part and um 
if you drill out the tension strip in the back you can after a while with some effort pull this whole thing out and this is the bimetallic strip of course I was thinking this is broken until I looked at the contacts I had infinite resistance but <laughs> that was not that anything was broken it was just so much dirt on the contacts after cleaning them I had my 49.5 ohms as the 126 unit should have and uh, it also moves I do not know it, if it moves enough I have uh, comp compared two 126s today and one moves about 5 mm in this direction and this one only about 2 maybe 3 maximum might still be enough to open and close the gap I don't know I need to check that but um, that might be possible to repair one failure mechanism that I saw is um, what might be possible to solve by bending here I don't know I'm, I haven't tried it yet it's I want to avoid it because I'm afraid I'm gonna break something for good but uh, the last failure mechanism is let's put this back in come on okay that's enough put this back in and then the rotating part back on the way I do this I hook it over this little pin here if it works I hook it over the pin then keep it in place with my fingernail if it works and then move the whole thing and put the pin in the hole you need to be aware of course that this little tab here has to be on the left side as you look in front of the bimetallic strip so once again this is now uh, the screw all the way down this would be up and um, one of my problems is that I have no idea absolutely no idea what the proper opening is at a room temperature where I do my all my measurements only the 119s and the 124s are where I have new old stock units and can actually adjust these to their uh, specifications otherwise the only way to do this is that I um, go for almost full open when I pull it out of the freezer so that would be negative 18 uh, degrees Celsius I don't know what that's in Fahrenheit right now but um, that that is the only thing I have to go by so I typically if I see something like this when I pull it out of the freezer I'm happy and it should work and also these air gaps have there are three different shapes of these air gaps which of course causes different uh, RPM response over time by the cars but I still think I can test them on my own car on that red bit there as long as I still have it before it's being sold and um, see if that starts properly it should just as I said just change the RPM characteristic over time and not starting or not start not whether it does or doesn't start so let's see that's what I'm going to try and then I'm going to put this back together and um, hope that that it works then this is one that I thought was beyond repair but it might not be uh, now I'm gonna have a few videos uh, without comment I'm just gonna have text underneath where I have done some measurements or some uh, taken some videos at 60 to 1 uh, time uh, speed up where basically 61 means one second is one minute and it shows very nicely how this thing works when it works and um, I thought this might be helpful I am quite confident now that I will be able to repair these and so I'm gonna repair the I think total of 17 well these include uh, 14 without the new old stock units repair the 14s I have and then I might be able 
if I have enough confidence to offer this as a repair service on the bidayparts.com website. If I go for that, if, if that works out, I will do this repair service, then I can only do that if I get the broken unit first. I cannot um, sell these. I, I need I need rep uh, I need cores basically, and before I receive the broken unit, I cannot send another one out uh, to anybody. I hope that is understandable. And now on to the to the videos of uh, the auxiliary air valve in operation.